Hey, Beavlo Bart here, and welcome. Yes, we're looking at um, a 90s game, the original Diablo. This has got um, Hellfire, so if you're wanting to buy this now, it's like $10 on GOG. Um, I want to take a look at it and see, well, I love the game myself. Uh, it was a game that I spent many, 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 many hours playing many, many years ago. Uh, I was along the same lines of where I was stuck at home and couldn't do anything because I was injured and learning how to walk all over again with machines hooked up to me and everything else. So, yeah, long story short, um, I had nothing to do but sit around and play video games all day long and get paid while I was doing so. So. We are going to take a look at it, and just for shits and grins, pros and cons of the original game. You can see the graphics are really grainy, but for the day, this was a really good game. And the aspect ratio, of course, is not going to be, you know, like 16 by 9. It's not going to be 1080p or even 720p. This was back in the day when average resolutions that you were playing on was probably in the neighborhood of, um, ugh, God, uh, 1024 by 768 was a good resolution. Um, so yeah, mouse speed's a little bit iffy at best. But you had your choice of three main characters, four with the Hellfire expansion. Um, and it was a top-down point-and-click. If you've never played the game before, then, well, a shame on you, but, you know, looking at the interface without talking to the individual peoples here, walking around town, um, it's just a simple top-down. If we look at this and relate this to Unreal Engine 4, uh, you know, you could use a top-down. If I were to try to do a recreation of this, I damn sure would be using the uh, the Sydney Studios assets because there's enough assets to where you could quickly reproduce a lot of the elements of this game. I mean, really and truly. I mean, it's an old, simple game, so there's a lot of little things you would have to try to recreate, like the uh, the magic, but you know, the idle animations. You know, if you're trying to you're trying to make something like this, as opposed to just you know creating a full-on, you know, exact reproduction. And some of the things that I thought about if trying to recreate this in Unreal Engine 4, so turn the volume, let's see if I can turn the music off. Or turn the music down at least. Music was a strong part of this game. In earlier games like this, um, hey, how you doing, bud? The music was a strong part of the earlier games that, you know, really is a lost art. Having the right soundtrack or the right music to go along with your game was an important thing. It, it helped with the ambience of the game itself and it's something to be considered. Wow, what can I do for you? Very simple, you know, interfaces right here. You know, if you're trying to recreate this, then essentially it's just a widget. Um, you know, just talking about the original Diablo game and, and how it would look trying to reproduce this in Unreal Engine 4. Um, a simple widget interface here where you've got just a, a border. You've got um, kind of a, w a blur for your background. That's easy enough to do. Um, you could recreate this pretty easy. Um, your options, one thing I, I noticed about it is you don't have the ability to use your mouse wheel to scroll down, which I think would be nice, but you can use your arrow keys to nego to navigate. Um, but Whoa, each of the ones like, um, brings up another widget here where, again, it would be nice if you could use your mouse wheel or click inside the scroll box here, but having the different items. Another thing also is um, with these items here, whatever they pop up in the menu, um, you see certain things like, okay, I, I just created this character, it's a level one, it doesn't have anything on it, but um, 
things like this, the longbow. This is the price of what it is, how much gold you actually have. But as you start progressing through, items will show up that have different stats in them. So you've got RNG for creating new new items that um, can have different stats. With a prefix and a suffix, like Bart's longbow of torture. So you would have a prefix and a suffix added onto here, and it might add other magical stats to it or buffs to it and whatnot. Um, little things like the well. As you progress through, the well is dark colored. Later on, it would turn into a lighter color. As for terrain, it's absolutely flat. If you're looking, there's no mini map in town mode. But you've just got a, a couple small buildings, a couple trees, a couple little rock space here and there, um, and a couple NPCs. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight NPCs that I can think of right off the top of my head, and a couple cows. <laughs> yes, there is a cow level. And you got to have little ambient things like that as well. I mean, now you notice you mouse over and you get the glow around. That is something you can do. Yeah, I, f I forget how you get to the, um, the cow level. I think it's there's a level that you, you go to that is a another version of the town. It's kind of like bur a burned up husk of a town. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Griswold was there, which is your blacksmith. So as you mouse over him, it shows up in the um, the guess your, your HUD there at the bottom. Um, yeah, you gotta have warts, um, wooden leg or peg leg or whatever, and um, yeah, it's been so long since I've done that. Oh, uh, God. But Wurt's up here, and you can talk to him, and Wurt, the peg-legged boy, and of course you also have the entrance way over there. You know, I think this game came out in what, 1996, 1997? There's some other aspects like um, the manual save feature. I did not care for that. The guy's not laying on the ground there. That's weird. So if you go down to the dungeon, essentially you go to this it's actually a low level. It's going to take you to a new level. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. And I'm going to purposely die here in just a minute. I have not used the save game feature. We'll look at my inventory. All I've got is the club, under gold, and two potions. The thing I like was, you know, you had... When you're level one, you go into the dungeon. The death sounds. Especially like for little four-legged critters. I love it. Absolutely love it. But there's no real death animation. They, they do have an animation. But that little death sound is funny. And believe it or not, like this guy right here, the fallen ones, whenever you kill something and they're nearby, they will run. Which is... Uh, Proof that there is some actual AI thought processes going on. And there's your down to level two. You're gonna find in the first parts, it's just these little common stairwells here. Um, they change to like spiral stairs when you go to different uh, levels of the dungeons, um, and the catacombs, and things of that nature. But I do want to kill a few things here and just. So, scroll of identify those come in handy because some of the items that you find are not identified that one was trapped that's a cool thing also if you're a rogue you can actually see that that will be highlighted in red to let you know that it was a um, um, trap you got barrels you can blow up the barrels and there's a chance that they'll either drop a potion or drop gold and there's a potion there um, the blacksmith oil was a uh, hellfire thing. 
I got the the wild hair at my butt to actually play this game again. I mean, you can actually do your map overlay, which I usually have that map overlay on all the time. All right, I'm not going to use any of my potions, but let's look at, idea, at what we've got here. Two healing potions, identify po um, scroll, and blacksmith oil. Still have my club, and about 141 gold, short sword, and a buckler. So I'm going to go ahead and, and die. And, and the one thing that I did not like about the original game was, and I quickly figured it out, after getting into some other fights and not paying attention. And believe it or not, one of my favorite things to do is actually, instead of playing legit, I've already beaten the game years ago, is I'll sit here while I'm eating and, you know, one hand mouse click and... Hell, I'm going to turn the freaking map on so I can see where the hell I'm going. Right, there's a door over here. Um... Get out of here. Alright, so. Yeah, zombies, skeletons. So I just want to gather a few things in my inventory. And. Now, since I have not saved the game, I get in here and my hands are off the, the mouse, by the way. But yeah, I'll go into a cheat mode and I'll just sit there while I'm eating and just screw around. Just something to occupy my brain while I'm eating. Okay, so you die. And I did not save my game anywhere whatsoever. I'm done. I never saved after I created my character at all. Since I did not save, I'm done. It didn't matter if I was doing good and I got down to, you know, level 10 of the dungeon, you know, the um, of this you know, map here, and was doing great, and everything was awesome, but because I did not manually save anywhere, I'm done. Game over. That really, really sucked. If you were playing this game, and you had made a lot of progress, and you were getting down to the dungeon level 15 or whatever, and getting close to finishing off... Yeah, I mean it's because of yeah you know, because of me not saving anywhere, it's a built-in hard hardcore mode. I mean, if I had hit if I just hit escape and hit save game anywhere, then I'd have been okay. Um, I really don't like that. So I have no option but to go back to new game. I've lost all my progress. It's not that I'm worried about the progress of this character here, but but I lost all of that um, progress that I made. And essentially, I'm starting right back at zero again with what I started with because I never did go to, you know, as I'm moving around town and doing things and getting situated and going to the dungeon, I had to manually hit escape and then save game. Now if I die, I'll, I will respawn right here with just this stuff right here. So that was one thing that really, really torqued me off about the original game that is so simple and easy to fix. And for people who actually played this game back in the day, like myself, playing with yourself, I mean by yourself, is fun, but there was a multiplayer mode and it was on Battle.net and you could actually with up to four players, you know, you and three other players could could negotiate around and, and play. But there were um, the Battle.net servers. Typically, you didn't find cheaters. So just, uh, just walking around the map show the the, uh, the town map is really really small. Now look, this guy's here now. He wasn't here before uh, in the last Please game. Please listen to me. The Archbishop also Lazarus. Relatively simple. He led us down it's here a to find blueprint the lost with prince. An audio Bastard led us into a trap. Scrolling. Now everyone is dead. Killed by a demon he called the Butcher. Avenge us. Avenge us. Really poor acting. And you know, this was awesome back in the day. But how easy would this be to recreate in um, 
Unreal Engine 4 with um, City Studios assets. I mean, hell, you could use the, the dungeon and uh, Viking. Sadly, my favorite skeletons though were in Pirates, so I would have to actually um, add the Pirates pack in. The Fountain, I think, is in the Pirates pack as well. There's also um, a similar fountain, a little bit more decorative, but a similar fountain also in uh, Western Frontier. But between all the different assets packed from from Cinti, you can get the um, the buildings that'll look close enough, rocks that'll be good enough, definitely foliage, um, NPCs, plenty of those. Um, there is actually like. This is Cain the Elder. I think there's a guy that looks similar to that. Um, and these two are pretty much the same thing, but with different colors. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be easy enough. And I know there's a guy that looks similar to um, Griswold. Um, sure, it'd be easy to find somebody for Odin. Um, Wirt, I don't know. There's one of the guys in Pirates is actually... Um, I forgot about Jillian the Barmaid. Good day. How may I serve you? I know how you can serve me. Spanky, spanky. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's enough stuff like barrels. I know there's barrels in several of the asset packs from Cindy. So you could use uh, Cindy assets to get plenty of characters. Because, I mean, this guy right here, I mean, hell, worst case scenario, you load up the Vikings and... Good lord, how many shields are in the Vikings pack? You know? Swords and between Vikings and dungeons and pirates and between the different City Studios asset packs. Um, plenty of swords, plenty of shields. Um, the big difference is I think later on as you progress and get into certain armors, I don't remember if, you, if it was in Diablo 1 versus 2 and 3, but um, I know that once you got, I believe once you got like the plate armors and stuff like that, it changed the way you looked. So that's easy enough to do also, just changing skeletal meshes, because I know there's enough of the hero skins and meshes to where you can change that out. Your primary characters was the warrior, which was this guy. His primary was sword and shield, it was very weak in magic, because you feel like your character. And how hard is this to make? You know. For cosmetic wise, it's not hard at all. Um, because what you're doing is you're pulling up stats. This number right, the only thing that changes on the whole thing is once it's pulled up your name and your class, you know, that's easy enough to do. That's, um, you're doing, uh, I've only been awake for like an hour. I took a hell of a nap earlier today. Um, a binding. You set your binding to pull your character name, your character class. You're, you're using bindings um, to um, actually get everything from your level, your current experience, your, what your experience you need for the next level, your gold armor class, percentage to hit, um, your resistance to um, different stuff like magic, fire, and lightning. Your current life, which is also here in this globe. Well, if you noticed earlier that um, the level of this, your blood, goes down inside this globe. Um, yeah, I mean, these are easy enough to do as well. So, your widget blueprints for each of these, like, and they, they dock in certain location. But you look at the view. Whenever I open up the, um, the we're just going to call them what, what they are as widgets. When I open up the widget for the character, or anything that pops up on this side, it shifts the view over. I don't know if I would do that. Um, no auto map available in town. That's just a little quick widget. Menu, of course, opens up an overlay, or kind of like my escape menu. And the escape key will close these. Your inventory and spells will come up on the right hand side, but also if you hit the S key, because this is a um, top down, it's going to bring up your your current skills that you can use or spells. Only one I've got here is repair skills, so I can use that to repair my items. 
but if you hit spells, you get this. And you, you know, different pages and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, these pop up, but the same thing is when these things pop up over here is they shift the view over. I don't think, like I said, I would do that. I would just set it to where it comes up and it doesn't block the character. Because that's one thing you don't want to do is block your character if you can help it. But in this one, if you open up your character and your inventory, you're, you're full screen at this point. You can't see what's going on. So I think that if I were to recreate this, I would only have it come like this far over on the screen. And these that come up on the left side, I would only have them come over you know, like a third away across. So you still have a one third area of your screen where you can see. And of course, by having this in a um, 16 by 9 format, that would be completely different. But still, you know, I don't even know what the, this was supposed to be by running Hellfire. It was supposed to be in um, 1920 by 1080, and of course, this isn't. Um, if I, like I said, if I was going to do a, a tribute, my own version of a tribute, I don't think I would. I will leave um, the windows where they are because the, the as you see the original when you open it up you can't move this you can't drag these anywhere they come up on the screen but I would make it though like I said instead of it taking up half the screen I would only make it take up a third of the screen and another thing that kind of had me um, miffed a little bit on uh, the original versus I think Diablo 2 brought in the stash you actually had a, a, a chest in town you can come up to and you had the ability to take things out of your inventory and put it in your stash now another thing also is um, the inventory storage system most modern games now most things take up one slot some things will do this method here where you can pick it up and drag it this takes up three vertical slots and you can't rotate it but the shield will take up a two by two and it's nice when you take it off your character you can see it coming off your character so different items like a dagger takes up two vertical most of the, the main weapons are going to take up three vertical Stabs can take up a 2x3 grid. Some other weapons take up 2x3. I think there were some that took up um, a 2x4. But by having the, the inventory like this, you are very, very limited on what you could carry when you're looting in the dungeon. And not totally against that, but the downside is, as a lower level, you don't have a lot of space. And once you go to level 2 of the dungeon, if you want to go back up to the surface, you've got to find the stairs, go back up to level 1, go back through your map to find the stairs to go back up to the surface, and then go across town and sell things. And you had to sell things because there was just nowhere for you to store them to keep them for later. I sense a soul in search of answers. You come over to this chicky here, you could find books. Scrolls, potions aren't naturally a potion. You drink it one time, you're done. A scroll, same thing. You use it one time and it's done. But scrolls of town portal, you had to keep those on you at all freaking times because if you want to go back to, to town really quickly and sell things, you had to have them. Of course, I don't have enough credits on here to get it, but, but then there were books. You buy a book and it taught you the spell now you can use your spell abilities to actually cast that spell help book of town portal right here so if i learn the this by having the book book of town portal then i now can cast that spell anytime that i want as opposed to carrying a bunch of scrolls requires 20 magic which a warrior doesn't have but you can acquire and 3000 gold so she will only buy this kind of stuff. She won't buy my club. She don't want to play with my club. 
So if I want to sell the club weapons, primary weapons, I have to go back to Griswold. And I'm not going to make enough. What can I do for you? By selling a, a cheap ass stick here. So if I want credits, then I'm going to have to go and farm. But now if I go down into the dungeon and I'm doing things and I come back up, she's probably not going to have that anymore, which kind of sucks. That's actually a rare one that pops up. But whenever I go down into the dungeon, I come back up. The items that show up at the vendors like Griswold and Pepin and whatever her name was, Adriana or whatever, Adrian or whatever her name was, the witch or word. They're not all going to have the same thing every time. It's going to be different every time you go down there. And that's cool too, but, oh wow, she's got that. It's 3,000 gold. Well, that's going to take me about 30 minutes of, of, you know, fighting down the dungeon before I can get enough gold to come back and get it. And then when I come back to get it, bitch ain't got it no more. You just want to smack a bitch. I'm like, come on. I want that damn... I want that. I mean, that is like the number one thing that you must have is that book of town portal. You know, and it... Whenever you're killing things, it's random drops. There's also libraries and things like that. And you get the books. But that is like the number one rarest thing to find is the book of town portal when you're low level and early on. There's no way that I'm going to be able to get it because as soon as I go into the dungeon and start fighting and I try to come back up, it's going to be gone. So let's just see. We'll go into the dungeon here. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. It's because the demons are right down here in an enclosed area, passing gas, and it has poor ventilation down here. So a cape. Now that was blue, so that's for loot wise stuff. I can wear this, it's going to give me one armor and it has poor durability. But, since it's not identified, then it's just going to give me crap stats. But if I go back and and pay Kane to identify it for me, it may be good, it may be bad. If I use a scroll of uh, identify, then it'll do it. And the same thing, it could be good or, or good to be bad, it's all RNG. The thing I like about the barrels, you see, it just gave me a potion of mana. Get that barrel, nothing. So you have an RNG built into these barrels. You could actually get a skeleton spawn. Not perfect timing there. So you, you could get um, either a skeleton or an archer skeleton or potions or gold or um, other stuff. And, it is nice. When you're down here at low level like this, things are relatively easy to kill. That brings into another question that I was thinking about. You know what? Screw you. I'm not going to sit here and chase your ass. You're going to come to me. Uh, but see, the AI has a really stupid but simple AI structure to it. You know, think how old this freaking game is, and it had AI that was functional. So, see, 1 to 6 or 1 to 8. And some of the weapons have their own cosmetics. So, there are some cool things that were going on. Um, I think this would be an awesome game to remake in Unreal Engine 4. Um, when setting up your character, since it is a top down, he stops to in combat. So... If you pay close attention to... Let's actually open up the door. Let's come in here. See, he comes to a complete stop to perform the animations for attacking. Um, so you're not doing the animations whenever you're walking. So you're not worried about trying to set up a per bone blend and this and that and everything else. Not worried about picking up a, buck, a buckler. Well, I'll go ahead and pick it up just for... Shit some grins here. See these right here. Sarcophagus. They can either spawn gold or they can spawn critters. So let's just pretend that we have enough gold now to go back and buy our Book of Town portal, which I don't. This would be three thousand gold. 
you got to navigate your way all the way back up to here to go back to town. Like I said, if you're on level 1 through 4, if you're on level 4, you've got to go all the way up um, through all the different map levels to get back to the stairwell, which can kind of suck. Level 5, 10, what was it, 15, you had different areas where you could actually... Um, you had exits. You see the water's clear now. Earlier it was brown. So there was a quest that I missed somewhere that had something to do with the water being brown. So I can go to Kane now. Hello, my friend. Identify Stay an item. a while and listen. I can identify the cape for a hundred bucks. Cape of sturdiness. So I can choose to wear that if I want to. Armor level is one. It's something. But I can sell my sword and this buckler. That one's better. But I've only got 55 gold pieces. Well, what can I do for you? And you can repair items. <laughs> I'm not gonna have enough money to do anything with. I have two gold. Yay! There was much rejoicing. So we'll walk back over here to um, the Wicked Witch of the, the East. <coughs> I sense a soul in search of answers. And we'll scroll down. And our book of town portal is gone. Yay, she has some really cool staves that I can't afford. Of course, Warrior doesn't use staves. But I can get a book of Fire Bolt, Fire Wall. But, as you can see, the list has changed. I can no longer get the Book of Town Portal. Complete loss. And her name is Adria. I was close. Adria. Adria the Witch. So, I think, for the most part, you know, the base mechanics-wise of, you know, creating the map, the dungeons. Let's actually go back into... So, over there by Wurt, there was an entrance... And later on, you can actually go in right here. So, um, there's other ways you can get into later as you unlock them. So that's something to take into effect. That um, area over there would have taken you straight to the catacombs. But let's actually look back at the dungeon again. And how hard would this be to actually make? Um, you have sections like this in um, the dungeons pack. I'm pretty sure there was the round stairwell as well. Um, the wall sections, the the ground material. Mm. There's also the possibility of setting up a procedurally generated, but I probably wouldn't go that route just yet. I would I would stay with a pre-made because these dungeons if you look at your map here um, you can see the dotted area right there is the border but if you look how the border is done it's just solid this was done in a lot of the games even Starcraft did that too um, Warcraft the original Warcraft not World of Warcraft but Warcraft Warcraft well Warcraft 2 also did it I believe Warcraft 3 was a completely different game. Uh, Warcraft and Warcraft 2, I know, did basically the same thing. See, this potion's still here. It's persistent. Um, so that's something you would have to consider also. Once I've come into this map, the map is saved, and I made a kill, the corpses are still there as well. And something to, to consider is if you want your corpses to be persistent or if you want them to go away. Um... But loot, once it was dropped, it's going to stay there. I can progress through the game, come back later, and like, I know there had to be some mana potions somewhere. No, okay, there's one on level one right here, not far from the stairwell. It can always come back to them later, so that's kind of a persistent thing. So that's something to think about for later. But for the map design itself, um, the borders of the map itself are... Well, you see, you've got the fog of war effect as well. Um, there are pieces of armor you can get that increase your light radius. 
um, I guess the, the the starting point would be to create the town, being able to nav navigate through town, that kind of stuff, setting up the locations for your buildings, your NPCs, and that kind of stuff. And then when you create your first dungeon map, you know, level one, this being, you know, the actual catacomb, not, or catacomb, the dungeon, um, setting up your wall sections, as you can see, they're they're kind of transparent. You can see through the, the walls. Again, interesting. We'll have to look at that in um, Unreal Engine and see how that looks. Um, but essentially, you're putting your wall sections down. Is a top-down gameplay. Okay, there's a library over there. But as you can see, there is no direct route this way. And that was something that always annoyed me as I'm sitting here playing and I can see right there, there's a skeletal home which has got the book sitting on top. I want that book. Well, that's actually probably going to be a scroll, but there'll be like a, um, a bookcase that would actually have a um, book you could harvest or obtain. You see, whenever I, I got that chest, it threw the gold up in the air and then threw it onto the ground. That's something to think about later also. But the map design, you can be fluid on your map designs and lay things out. But with this, you can see stuff through the walls. Like, oh, okay, but if you look on your, your mini-map here, I'm going to have to go back over here, go through here, through here, come up through here, and hopefully there's a door over here. If not, I'm going to have to figure out how to get all the way around to get back to this section over here where that is. So that's like right there on the mini-map. Mini-map, I'm not sure how you would do it this way. I'd have to look at it. I know there's ways of doing it. There's ways of doing it where you can actually have it top down and actually see and see all the critters and that kind of crap. But um, the initial map design is simple. It's a top-down gameplay. You've got doors that open and close. Notice as I open the door, I can now see through these walls. But as soon as I close it, I cannot. So is that being affected by the player's light radius? There's a lot of little complicated um, things to think about of how this was actually done and how you'd actually do this in Unreal Engine 4. You can see the corpses are persistent there as well. I think I would have the... I would think about the loot sting... But I think I'll probably make the corpses go away. But then I, I got to think about since the um, that m mana potion that's sitting over there is persistent. If I leave the map and come back again, typically, you know, the fast method. If I just I create the map, I come down here, I'm killing bad guys. Um, typically the way most people do their maps as soon as I leave and then come back guess what we got event begin play because we just loaded a new, a new level um, this new level if it, we don't come up with a persistence uh, save to it then as soon as I come back down here again this chest is going to be closed um, all the mobs are going to be alive again just like we've never been here before so right now as soon as I decide that I am going back up to town or to the next level up on the dungeon instead of it just closing that down and basically this would in a cheat in a cheap and easy way of doing this selecting here as soon as I go to walk up there and I cross over that box collision I am doing an open level uh, node but then whenever I go back down here again it's going to read off of event begin play. And if we didn't have a persistence of save, then we wouldn't see that um, all of these um, corpses are still here. And there's our potion of mana still sitting right there again. So that's the biggest thing. Once you've got your map designed, you can walk around it, set up your doors so you can open and close doors. Um, yeah. That's the next thing you'd have to take into consideration is um, your mobs. These are very, very simple mobs. Um, I don't think you really need to spend a whole lot of time with um, AI behaviors. If you're creating something like this, 
Um, but whenever you leave the, the level to transport yourself from level to level, you need to have a the, the map save and I'll have to look at what's going to be the best approach for saving the map for persistence based off of the game. So if I now go create a new character, I want to start fresh again. I want my character save game to affect the map that way. But if I create a new character and I go to this map right here and I go to here, I want it to be just like I've never been here if I'm on a new character. So I'll have to look at the best approach for that. But I think um, as a side project, but besides the moon project, I'm seriously considering doing something like this right here because this was a fun game. But once you've created this game in a top-down mode, um, you've already created all the animations, you've already created all the other stuff, there's a slight difference in if you were to then be able to go into your your options and select top down or first person or third person mode rather so instead of being right here you could go say into a third person mode like a first person shooter perhaps where you're actually seeing through the, the player's eyes and you're doing all your sword and your magic and everything else that's something to think about too, but since you've already got the map built, is if you built it correctly, then it wouldn't matter if you're in first person, third person, or top down. The scenery is going to be the same, the animations are going to be the same. The only difference is our character here, as soon as he's, you know, and top down, if I come over here to hopefully find a new bad guy. Um, as soon as we tell him to attack, he will do his attack, but he stops to attack. So you see, he's stationary. So as soon as I, I left click to perform an attack, stop, attack. Hey, there's a boat. So you see. The animation wise, you don't have to worry about, like I said earlier, per bone blend is a method when you're setting up your animation blueprint for making it so that the bottom half of your character is doing one animation system, like walking or running or crouching or whatever, but your top half of your body from spine one up is doing a separate animation. So it is possible to blend your animations together so that you're able to swing a sword and. Um, you know that kind of stuff while moving but in this it's top down whatever I'm not doing anything he's doing an idle animation now he's doing a walking animation walking animation and <coughs> see, he's just stationary which is cool it'd be a, a lot easier to actually create the combat system because you're not trying to worry about um hey look another unidentified piece all right since we leveled up now we have this that pops up here and if i click on the red button now this will be fun to try to implement uh, we now have a button here instead of it displaying so if i want to upgrade my magic so as soon as I hit the button, it upgrades plus one to here and subtracts one from here. And we have a base and a now. Why do you have base and now? And, and that's because if you have this is your base stats, if I have a piece of armor that gives me plus two to all stats, then this will be 32, this will be 17, this will be 22, this will be 27. But these are my base stats, but this is my current stats based on the buffed gear. Eh. Nice. Necessary. What, whatever. But I'll give you one other thing to, to consider before I go ahead and kick out of here because I need to go take care of a few things around the house here. 
Um, I may actually jump in and just... I don't know. I got too many projects open already. But, um, create a project in Unreal Engine 4. And, um... Just kind of go from memory and start creating a basic terrain. If you look at the size, this is probably maybe a 2x2 two two tile if you're creating your basic terrain. So it's really small for your town map. So we just need the um, base terrain, grass, a little bit of dirt, draw our dirt path, fountain, so I'm probably going to say... Probably do pirates uh, first off, and um, because I know I want a few things out of pirates, like the fountain. I think there's a different fountain, but you know, whatever. Do the pirates asset pack? Um, probably do the the fantasy heroes and adversaries. So probably have about about three or four or five Cindy Studios assets in here into a base level project and I think what I'll do is I can you know well it sucks if I alt tab out then this minimizes completely um, start recreating the town just for shits and grins you can't do any attacks in town all you can do is navigate and yeah, see, I right click and I have that spell active, so it automatically opens up that. But I can't do any attacks in town. If I Hello, my target friend. him, he's just gonna walk Stay over a to while me. And but... listen. I don't have enough granites. No, oh, no, I'm poor. Well, um, what can I do for you? Hello, yeah, I think my it, friend. That's, that's what I'm do. Stay a while is, and um, listen. So it's going to cost me a hundred to identify it, and then how much can I sell it for? Oh, well, what can I do for you? Oh, 67. I got boned. So yeah, um, I'll start with trying to recreate the town. may have to do some you know creative stuff I'm not gonna like well I gotta have this rock needs to be exactly you know 500 units from here and 100 units over and I'm not gonna get that hypercritical on things but I'll try to get as close as I can to the base you know the trains flat but the the path going between the blacksmith and the uh, the tavern um, things like that I'll have to pull in some animations like I've got uh, pedestrian animation pack which I know has got um, someone sitting down like that he's just sitting there holding a beer or a tankard of ale or whatever um, but even though it would be the, the low poly stuff the, the polygon asset it will still be a much higher polygon um, a much, much higher resolution than this It'll be in 1080p, you know, in instead of this 4x3 letterbox. So, something for you guys to think about while I'm gone and setting up. As a level 1 character, I can walk over to a skeleton and hit him one time and he's dead. Okay? If I'm a level 1 character fighting a level 1 skeleton, they die in one hit. I have sufficient damage with my measly 1 to 4 or 1 to 6, or in this case 1 to 8 damage saber, to sufficiently have enough damage, which means that the hit points of a level 1 skeleton, or a level 1 zombie, or whatever, um, they have between one and four hit points. So roughly we'll say two hit points um, for a level one. Um, and if you look at our character, 
my overall damage with 30 strength and blah 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 blah. Um, 60% chance to hit, that's something that's later down the line. But my damage is between 1 and 8. Well, my original sword was between 1 and 4, I think it was. Or 1 and 6. So that's how much damage I do, between 1 and 8. Damage scaling. If I'm fighting against a level 15 mob, um, I need. They, they may have 150 health as opposed to four. Um, so I need to have a weapon, or my, my base damage needs to be high enough to do that, and I have damage scaling. I'm level two now, but that didn't give me a buff to my damage, even though my strength is 30. If I get my strength to 40, that's going to affect my damage output, and you have all these scaling based off of all this other stuff. What would you do and you can answer this in, in Discord if you like. Um, how would you go about your damage scaling? Would you even bother? Because um, technically you're doing between, right now, it's saying my damage is between 1 and 8. So my maximum damage is 8 hit points. Wow. But then again, my character only has... Um, why does it say my health is below? Since my life is 72, and since I'm slightly injured, I currently have 69 health. But my maximum health is 72. Yeah, figure the math out of how many hits it would take. Minimum and maximum. Minimum of 72 hits. Maximum of... Or maximum of 72 hits, but... You see, 72 health. That's going to increase over time by increasing my vitality. Blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, when you're setting up all these stats, how important are stat scaling to you? But think about how important it would be to... Okay, we all got our own game nerd built inside of us. And back in the day when this was a brand new game, I was looking at them stats awful damn heavy. Well, I just leveled up. I've got five points I can distribute. Um, I really need more damage, so I, I need to put you know, with my sword. So I need to put that in my strength. But my vitality is low, so I need to have more hit points so I don't die as quick. So if I put three points in vitality and two points in strength, I don't need any magic right now because I'm a I'm a sword monkey. I'm a warrior. So you're know, back in the day. I was trying to always balance my character and try to get him perfect. As, you know, like Dungeons & Dragons or, you know, this game. Or as games progress, you're always looking at those stats, trying to get the, um, what do you kids nowadays call Min-maxing or whatever the hell it's called. Mid-maxing, whatever. Um, you're always looking at stats trying to improve your character. So as you progress, if you're building a game like this, then you really got to take in into consideration how you're going to nerd up your game. Because if you just walk around whacking shit with a stick, it might be fun for 30 minutes, but you know you're going to have those players that, that go into the game and it's like, oh, well, I can micromanage all of my stats this way and get this, this armor piece right here gives me a plus one to armor and, you know, plus three to my magic, or plus two to all stats, or you're, you're grinding and grinding and grinding, going back through with the same character, starting the thing all over again, you know, a dungeon all over again, or a different difficulty or whatever else, so you can try to farm up to get that superior plate, you know, you know, frog dick's plate of the monkey, you know, whatever, so that, you know, you have the best armor you can get and the best sword you can get and then you finally get all those things done and then you realize what the fuck do I do now? <laughs> but still, I mean, before you get to the what the fuck moment um, you know how we, we get as gamers we, we, we focus in on trying to um, get all this shit perfect and make our character many much more awesomer so that if we do go into a multiplayer and invite our friends to our our 
hack and slash or our magic or if they're in hellfire they're the monk and he actually does more damage with um, kicking and punching than using swords but um, the rogue does more with a bow and the rogue um, I think you can only upgrade your strength and dexterity once you get to a certain point you got a maximum cap of where you can go with um, vitality and, and magic. Same thing with um, this being a warrior. I can I can go high on my strength, but I can only go so far with my magic and uh, dexterity and vitality. This is my main stat. So I think I'll start doing a recreation. I'll start off with the uh, the warrior class, and we'll start off with. Yes, you can use hotkeys to open and close windows. Start making town, laying out buildings, you know, the terrain, the trees, the path, the the base NPCs, because all they do is they sit there. And she does her little pretty little swaying back and forth. So she's doing a different um, idle animation than he is. Um, Griswold, well, he's got his arms folded. So they're all slightly doing a little bit different idle animation. But I got that covered. The, the assets, no problem. Cine Studio stuff. Um, but think of what the importance is to you of stat scaling. When I go from level 1 to level 2, do I gain anything besides the ability to add stats? Like, I get five, five points I can distribute between my, my four main stats. Um... How do those stats affect your character? So if I'm a level 10 um, with X number on this, X number on that, how does that affect my damage output? How does that affect my my hit points? Uh, which of the two main considerations is how much life do I have? How much resistance to damage do I have? How much damage can I do? Think of how those stats are going to integrate into the game. But I think as, as progression-wise goes, the first things first is... Uh, and I'm going to be using my, my simple multiplayer Steam template. Because, well, why not? So you can go into single player. I'll have to redesign the menu system a little bit. Um, so that when you go into... Um, uh, I would say you'd have to go to single player first. So that you can create your character by picking what your class is and since I'm using Steam architecture I'm just going to carry over the Steam name um, so you don't you're not naming your character um, come up with a different way for doing a save game system but for right now main menu is going to stay the same you're only going to have one class you're going to be a warrior and if I put my mind to it I could have town pretty much recreated and the characters in game, the animations in game, for the most part, um, hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. I would say three hours. Within three hours' time, I can, I'm sure I could have town recreated, um, close enough proximity, um, and of course, you can't call the game Diablo. So I'm just going to call it Devil Dick or some kind of dumb shit like that. Just like I'm doing Blue Harvest for the Moon Project, uh, I'll come up with a, a short gap name which will, you know, work for the time being. So if you guys are interested in something like this, let me know also. What would you guys rather see, though? Would you rather see a recreation of Diablo, since it's a classic game, or the Moon Project? Because kind of want to, I I am the kind of person that I don't want to build a complete game. If I set my mind to it, I could build the entire thing. I could build a, a, a game myself. I mean, with all the City Studios assets, all the animation. Well, I'm probably gonna end up doing both. Um, but with having all the stuff at my disposal, it's not much more than an asset flip until I start bringing in stuff like, you know, the the working inventory system or the, the working character stat system and the leveling system 
and the save game and the persistent maps and the you know that kind of stuff as I start increasing that stuff then it starts turning more into a game instead of just an asset flip so I think that's what I'll probably work on for um, the Wednesday video which this is just a whatever video this is kind of a spur of the moment thing but for Wednesday uh, video whatever Wednesday um, I think this is what I'll work on is I will show what I've done if I've done anything that thus far and start creating town but there's certain things that I want for sure from this game killing those little critters the the sound that they make and like hello my friend stay a while and listen I mean, you can't just rip their stuff out so you gotta hello, have my friend stay a while and listen that was like one of those iconic things there um, well what can I do for you and that well what can I do for you you know Greetings, good master. Welcome to the Tavern of the Rising Sun. Yeah, it's the same shit every time you, you go to... Well, what can I do for you? Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. So, you, you're going to need some voiceover stuff because you can't just sit here and rip that. Music-wise, I'll probably spend 30 minutes going through the uh, Technowax website and I'm sure I can come up with some iconic town ambient music and then dungeon ambient music and so forth so I, I I'm crazy about music I, if you're gonna have a game you gotta have music and the music has to really just jive with the mood I mean it's gotta it helps to build what's going on you're like okay we're in town everything's quiet everything's passive but as soon as my ass hits that dungeon it's okay but then again later on something to think about is whenever you get close enough proximity to enemies and there's impending combat coming up you want that music to go from passive to aggressive the mood of the room changes when you get that aggressive music going you get that build up of oh, okay something's getting ready to happen you're watching a movie and if you watch a movie without music you might as well just hit mute and try watching a movie if you could make it through an entire movie with no audio whatsoever with the volume turned off or the mute button on you'll be drooling by the end of it if you can make it that long so think about Star Wars, think about horror movies, think about any movie that you watch, suspenseful, comedy, every movie has music, and it helps to build that that mood. Games are the same way. When you're in there, in that dungeon, you want that music to kind of keep you on the edge of your seat a little bit, knowing that shit's about to go um, south, and you need to, okay, I need to go ahead and make sure that I've got my health all the way up and my mana's ready. Okay, now I go over here. And, yeah. You want that. You want that, that ambience to just build the situation and that there's nothing left. There's no zombies left or no skeletons left and everything's dead on the map. Then the music needs to change again to something more passive. If you're not under threat, then the music needs to be passive. If there's threat or imminent combat or if you want to make the player think something bad's about to happen that's when you start bringing in that transition of the music so some little tidbits of wisdom to live by all right so it's actually after midnight now so tonight's video which will be you know for me it's after midnight it's technically wednesday now so Wednesday night video is going to be um, recreating at least town, getting the town done with Cinti Assets and Unreal Engine 4. All right, guys and gals, I love y'all, and I'm going to get out of here. Uh, if you paid attention to General Mayhem channel, um, my nap earlier, I, um, 
actually got some rest. I was snoring. I don't think I've gotten... Um, yeah, I'll do it live. I do all my stuff live now. The reason why I do everything live is because if I screw something up, then you can see me screw it up and how I fix it, and if I can fix it. You can see how smart I actually am. Um, if I sit here and I make videos and I don't show all my screw-ups, and, and yes, it's nice to watch a video that's only five minutes long showing how to do something, but I also like to open it up for questions. People say, well, why are you doing it that way? Why don't you do it this way? A, because I'm probably stupid and don't know a better way of doing it, or B, I do it so I can show example-wise of what's actually going on. I try to keep it simple stupid and that kind of stuff. So by doing everything live, it gives people a chance to, to jump in there and either um, make suggestions or ask questions of, of how and why I'm doing it like that. So I like life. It's the interaction. Um, I know I would probably have a much higher view rating and... Um, subscriber count and everything else if I just did 10 minute videos on here's how you do this thanks for watching see you I would have a larger channel by now if I did that but yeah it's good to be social every now and then so yeah about the sleep thing I, I very rarely especially recently have not been able to get any good solid rest in between having problems with cysts and infections and so forth um, pain, discomfort, things of that nature, and also dealing with, and I love my mother, but, you know, she talks and sometimes yells in her sleep. When she needs me, you know, she calls for me, and I'll stop what I'm doing, and I'll go take care of my mother. Um, you know, she has some medical needs that I have to attend to, and things of that nature as well, but, you know, make sure she's taking her medication, um, she has trouble walking, so making sure she gets from her her chair to the wheelchair or the walker or whatever else. But um, with her yelling in her sleep, there's been many days while she's in there asleep in her, her room, and I'm trying to lay down in my room asleep, and I hear her screaming my name at the top of her lungs. And one morning, it was like 6 o'clock in the morning, I jumped up twisted my ankle getting out of bed so it hurt like hell got in there and she's still snoring her ass off sound of freaking sleep she's having a dream and she's screaming my freaking name out or she you know a lot of times she's screaming up her you know her husband passed away my stepfather passed away just shy of two years ago so she's still yelling his name out sometimes but if I hear her yell I'm gonna go check on her you know as I should. But it's really shitty though whenever you you jump up out of bed when you hear her screaming your name and you jump up and you hurt your ankle getting out of bed run in there and find out she's just yelling in her sleep again. You make that pissed off walk back to your room and lay back down and, and try to go to sleep and you can't do it. You know, I can. I'm too fucking old to be you know, trying to run and fat and smoke too much and yeah anyway see I finally got enough sleep earlier today that and I, I didn't need to be sleeping in the middle of the day like that but still I got enough sleep to where I was snoring and enough to hurt in the back of my throat so my throat's hurting right now I need to go get something for that I make some hot tea I got some um, I did finally get some more of the uh, the Carolina um there's a probably only a tea plantation in the country, but uh, we have a, a tea plantation that's not 20 miles from here, and they make a black tea that's actually a mint. So it's a mint black tea that is really good, either hot tea or freaking iced, tea, sweet iced tea. Holy shit, man! Good stuff. Um. Bigelow Tea Company actually does um, the distribution for them. So, just about any grocery store around the U.S., you can find Bigelow Tea. And you can get the um, the Charleston Tea Plantation stuff separately, but it, it's still it's packaged and, and done through them. 
the plantation here, they actually do the processing of the tea itself. They bag it, and then it's actually packaged in tea bags, stuff like that, somewhere else. But, yeah, if you get Bigelow tea in the grocery stores, get the, the Carolina Mint. It's made right here, 20 miles from my house. Shit is really good. Really good. Um, so whether you like hot tea or, or a sweet iced tea, or as we just call it, sweet tea. Um, yeah, good shit. It, the, the mint, just, it's enough. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and do a review of tea right now, but uh, yeah, it's worth it. It's not as cheap as regular, you know, like store brand shit or whatever. It's on par with, you know, the name brands like Lipton and whatnot. But it's worth it because it's helping to support my local community. So, yeah, awesome. Doesn't support me any, but whatever. Um, still going to be looking for more sponsors and shit like that. But, um, you guys keep in touch on Discord. Let me know what's going on and what you want to see. If you want to pitch in on any of the, the projects that are going on, let me know. So, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to do this and loose. And we will see you guys. Bye.